Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I should have better audio now, finally. It took me how many years? Six years on YouTube to invest in a mic, but here we are. Um, my camera is charging, hence me filming on my laptop, but I wanted to get this video out before the sun goes down. Um, hi. <laughs> it has been months since I've filmed a video. A lot has happened, um, a lot that I wasn't ready to talk about, um, a lot that I was healing from. The past five years for me have been the most difficult in my life. Um, I have been in therapy for the past nine months. I started in March when the world went to hell and everything just kind of blew up. Um, personal things in my life had blown up as far as, you know, like the virus goes to affecting everybody. I just felt um, at my lowest point in March of 2020. And that is when I decided that I needed to seek a professional um, in order to help me through some things mentally that I was struggling with and where they were crippling, you know, uh, my day-to-day -day life. So um, anyway, I want to talk about the things that I learned in therapy and what my therapist taught me because this was the longest time I'd ever spent in therapy. And also, it was the first time I'd been in therapy as an adult. Um, I had two different stints of therapy as a child. Um, one was addressing my trichotillomania. That was when I was in second grade, so seven, eight years old. And then the second time in my life um, was when I was feeling suicidal at about 13, 14 years old. I was 14 and that session was only twice. I saw a therapist twice to kind of get me through that hurdle um, when I was feeling really down and sad. Um, so anyways, without further ado, let's jump in. I don't have all of the literature that my therapist has given me. She sent me a lot via email because we weren't able to meet in person, but I have printed out some things. I didn't want to bore you with, a, with any of that paperwork um, unless you want to see it maybe in another video, but I have just the key notes on my phone of what helped me through trauma, what helped me through um mental abuse, physical abuse, what helped me through a lot of the pain that I was feeling. So it won't really be like a story time video. This is literally going to be the things that I've done since March that have helped me get through the toughest time in my entire life. So the first thing that I want to talk about is setting boundaries. My therapist is amazing. Finding somebody that you click with and are compatible with is important. But the first thing she told me when we began back in March was, you need to set boundaries. I can tell right away you're somebody who's very um, passive and will let will let people take advantage of you. Um, for me personally, it was my parents who had taken advantage of me and had caused me the most pain uh, in the past five years. So she said, you need to set boundaries. And even though your parents are out of your life today, you can't allow anybody to make you ever feel bad about yourself again. As far as, you know, somebody tormenting you, somebody physically grabbing you, pushing you, hitting you, slamming you. Um, a lot of the things that I was um, conveying to her is that not only was it mental, but like the physical abuse that I had allowed myself to fall into the hands of is just so sad to me. Um, and so she said, never let anybody take advantage of you. Do what you can and, and set those boundaries so that it will never get to that step again. And she said, I know your parents are the ones who have caused you the most trouble. She said, yeah, that's harder because that's a family relationship. Um, she said, but I have clients who allow their friends and people that they know at their work, different hobbies that they go to, people that they have to come in contact with in their life and day to day um, where they're not setting boundaries and they allow those people to hurt them. Sometimes people don't intentionally mean to hurt you, but if you set those boundaries and those limits for yourself, it helps um, prevent those feelings from being hurt. And if those people are trying to hurt you, then it, it sets you away from those people. You're able to remove yourself from that situation. Setting boundaries was the biggest thing for me, and I wish I would have known that um, back in uh, my, my older teen years, like allowing myself that freedom to not be around those people. And for me, that's hard because that's family. Um, but if you can set those boundaries and read up on that, that, that helped me tremendously. That was the biggest impact that I learned from therapy. So the second thing that I have mentioned time and time again when I've been talking to friends about my therapy and how nine months of strenuous conversation about what has hurt me in the past has done to me mentally, um, not reliving any moments that, have, that has 
and have to do with your past that's traumatic. So what I mean by this and what my therapist um, explained this to me like is if you're remembering bad moments or good moments with people that have hurt you, the, the bad moments are always going to live and, and remain alive in your brain. So if you can disconnect from the good moments that you lived with those people too, it will help you disconnect from them entirely until you're able to think back to just the good moments. If this makes any sense, let me give you an example. Um, this was about two years ago, a year and a half ago, actually. This was the last vacation I took with my parents and it's the last time I saw my dad. We went to Iceland um, for a family vacation and um, the, the vacation ended short because my parents got in an argument and that led to me stepping in because it, things were going to get physical and I started recording my dad and I said, dad, you know, you can lose a lot right now if I exploit what is happening here. Um, and that's when my dad calmed down. It, it, he went from being very angry and, and violent to calming down because I was recording what was happening. And um, the vacation ended. That's the last time I've seen my dad. I talked to my dad um, a little bit after that, but just to cut our relationship finally, because that's when I had come to terms with, you're toxic in my life. I don't need you. I don't want this energy in my life. And before Iceland, before that, before the past five years, there's a lot of good moments with my parents and with my family in general that I can think back on and appreciate. But up until maybe like August of 2020, I could not think of those things because it brought me so much anger and pain because I would think of the good moments, but immediately I would think of the bad. So you have to give yourself that time to unravel every single memory and every single moment because if you think of if you try and just focus on the good so quickly the bad is inevitably going to jump back in into your mind and you're going to remember why you don't like them in the first place so everybody always says you know your friends your other family your maybe some people in your professional life well just think of the good remember the good things that happen and you can be grateful for those things while that's true if you think of those good things you might you might remember those bad and that can be equally as toxic so just give yourself that time in that space and allow yourself to be alone sedentary in this moment you don't have to think you don't have to do anything you don't have to remember anything to do with those people you don't have to associate yourself with them um, in order to move forward before you can really relive the history and the past you have together so that one's a little bit um, detailed <laughs> and, and it's multi-layered. So uh, yeah, just take that with a grain of salt and um, I hope you understand what I'm saying. Okay, the next thing um, is, is that I still have to do today but has helped me um, really cut back on the self-deprecation that I was facing the, uh, the past like three years really. Um, letting go that anger that you feel and letting go that pain so that you can heal. And what I mean by this is crying, reading, writing it out, going out, staying in, whatever you can do to focus on yourself, eating differently, meditating, being active, not being active. We're all different. Um, listening to music, going on a long drive, watching movies, hanging out with your partner, hanging out with your friends, talking it out to, you know, the close people in your life, um, limiting yourself and not spreading yourself so thin or going out and trying different things. Whatever you feel like you can do for yourself to express this pain that you're feeling. For me, it was crying 100%. For me, I, I cried a lot and I cried a lot during my therapy sessions with my therapist and I cried a lot in front of my boyfriend and on FaceTime with my friends. Um, crying allowed me to feel that emotion that I had kept inside of me for so long, trying to be strong. Um, in front of my parents, they hated whenever I would cry and um, especially my dad. So I had learned to not express my emotions I had learned to not express myself the way I needed to. And I had, I had essentially destroyed myself for a few years because I wasn't allowing myself to feel 
at all. I would accept what happened to me and like analyze it briefly, but then be like, well, I'm going to shove that to the back of my brain and keep going. You know, I wasn't allowing myself to even absorb and really consider what had just happened to me and how it was affecting me. And my therapist was so shocked that I was so like one dimensional about a lot of trauma that had occurred in my older teen years. And I won't go into the details because this isn't what that video is about. It's about allowing yourself to peel off those layers so that you're multidimensional and you're allowed to express it in the way that you need to express it in order to feel better, in order to feel any kind of healing. The process of healing is ongoing. I am not healed, but I am a lot better than where I was starting in March. Um, I couldn't talk about what I'm talking about today. Even the even the chance of healing for myself, I couldn't talk about it without crying because I had so much that I needed to let go and, and express and, and not feel judged and not feel weak and not feel like I'm limiting myself because I'm crying over years of abuse and trauma and things that I had never realized. Uh, Briefly, I'll tell you, my parents made me feel bad for being different, and my parents made me feel bad for not believing the same things that they believe. So sitting back and allowing yourself to, to understand and, vi and visualize who you are as a person and what you stand for is so important, because otherwise you're a shell of a person, and that's what I had become. I had become a shell. Do I want to live for my parents, or do I want to live for myself? You know? So... That's very important, understanding that. Um, next, you cannot change what has happened. And this is still a very sensitive topic for me. It's something that I get very emotional on because I think back to, I could have left sooner. I could have asked for help. I could have reached out to my friend's parents and other um, adults in my life to help me. I could have reached out to authorities to help me, and I didn't until I was um, like 17, turning 18, and I'm 22 now. I could have reached out a lot sooner than I did, but I didn't out of fear, and I didn't because I was afraid of being ostracized from my family, um, and there's a lot that was swept under the rug, and there's a lot that I grew up thinking that was normal, and because it was happening to my mom when I was young, it should have happened to me, and that's okay, because that's how our family dynamic was. No, that's not correct. My therapist had to let me know that this thing that you went through just because you saw it happen to your mom, and you witnessed it as a child, and your mother didn't contact authorities, doesn't mean that you should settle for that. Um, my therapist made some... Um, you know, some diagnoses, if you will, about my parents, but, sh but my therapist cannot confirm these things because they would have to go through an evaluation themselves. But my therapist did tell me that she thinks my dad is a narcissist in and of himself. He is a complete narcissist. And my mother, being a codependent, which she thinks, um, really had no other choice but to put up with that crap that my dad was dishing out to her as a narcissist. He knew that he had her in his hands, in his claws, and she would not leave. And my mom, not thinking of any other solution or any other way out of this, had to be with him. And so me, growing up as an only child, I was like, well, this is a family dynamic. This is how things go. And that's not correct. It's um, actually very abusive. And I'm so glad, my therapist told me, I'm so glad that you had the willpower and the wit to understand this. Um, when I first started under understanding that my family might be a little bit different around 15 or 16 years old, and then finally at 17, I was like, I can't take this. I'm going to end up extremely hurt or I'm going to, I'm going to end up, you know, as a mental, uh, attachment to my dad, like my mom has become. So allowing yourself, um, that freedom to understand you cannot change what has happened, but moving forward, you can understand what has happened in the past that's wrong. Um, for me, I was very confused when I was like leaving the toxic situation that was my family. And I was like, am I making the right decision? Is, is this a big mistake? Like, am I thinking correctly? So giving yourself that confidence and that, and, and that understanding that it's not completely comfortable, but you are doing the right thing because inside, innately, you don't feel like it is 
what is supposed to be happening, give yourself that because I'm so glad I trusted myself and gave myself that courage and, and I had to push through many days and many nights. I was like, I hope I'm doing the right thing, but it feels right. But I hope I'm doing the right thing, but it feels right. Give yourself that courage and that belief in yourself um, because otherwise I wouldn't have made it out if I didn't cut the cord when I did and then kind of have like an on and off relationship with my parents for about three years until I was like, no, this is not healthy for me. I've, I've got to cut connections entirely, which is sad. I, I wish it didn't happen that way, but in order to move forward and, and not try and uh, harp on the past, you have to give yourself that courage and be proud of yourself because I'm very proud of myself. You should be proud of yourself too. So, um, kind of going back to what my therapist told me about my parents having mental um, diagnoses that have gone have, that have gone unnoticed for so long, and um, kind of giving me that comfort that there are things going on internally within my parents that make them this way. The next key step is understanding that the people who have hurt you have problems. This is not an excuse for them. This is not a, um, a scapegoat for them. Like, oh, maybe somebody is bipolar and it's okay for them to treat you that way because they're bipolar. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is because my dad is a narcissist, I can wrap my head around why some things happened the way they did and why I felt so confused, why he was gaslighting me and made me feel like it was my problem, why I saw him manipulate my mom and she retreat back and be scared of what was happening to her because she's codependent so uh, maybe talking with a professional you're able to find some answers about people that you never could understand um, me as an only child i didn't have brothers and sisters to bounce back on it you know to bounce off of as far as like hey mom is like a little weak don't you think or dad is like really overbearing and abusive don't you think like for me i had to live with myself for like a number of years internalizing all of this and being like, am I making this up? Is, is, this, is this an actual thing? Is this like a scientific term? Is this something that is actually causing my father to be this way or my mother to be this way? So understanding these people who have problems and who have hurt you, you know, gave me some kind of justification like, oh, well, that makes a lot of sense. And yeah, I see that completely. So that helped me a lot because if, if a lot of people around you are like, your father's so great, and then you go home and he treats you completely differently, it's really hurtful because you're like, these people will never see this side of my parents. They will never see what I have to go through and you feel so alone. I felt alone, like I'm on an island. And I'm stuck with my parents and and though they have both sides to them and, and society gets to see one side and I get to see the other, I'm, I'm able to have that peace within myself knowing that there's an actual situation going on with them and whether they get that treated or not, at least I have some peace and I'm like, wow, they really were messed up and I'm so glad I talked to a professional who was able to give me some answers. Okay, this is probably the last thing I'll touch on. I know I'm, I'm approaching 20 minutes now. Um, building happiness for yourself each day. This is something that helped me immensely starting back in March. I needed to understand what made me happy because I'm not sure what trauma you've gone through personally, but for me, I was told what to do and I was expected to do things my parents' way, not my way. I'll just let that sink in. I was told what to do for a number of years and I was told what to believe based off of how my parents believed and how they thought and how they wanted me to be. I had never even considered what I wanted and what made me happy. And this will leave you feeling a little lost, especially if you're an older a teenager becoming a young adult. It's like, wow, I have all of these chess pieces now that I get to move my way. And they've been arranged for me the past number of years. Like, this is one, overwhelming, but two, it's also exciting. Like, let this excitement and let this unknown um, propel you and accelerate you so that you can really flourish and become yourself. Because I, uh, I'll use this for example, um, I am not religious and my parents are both Baptist. I had never even expressed that out loud that I don't really follow any religion. 
And that upset my parents so much that I had kind of like crushed that mentality. I had kind of crushed that um, feeling for myself. And I had made, I had let two adults in my life push parents out of the way. I had let two adults in my life make me feel like I wasn't allowed to have that opinion. Because what? They're religious? I had been to church. I had gone to a vacation Bible school. I think it's a fun experience, but I personally don't follow that religion. I don't follow that. I don't really follow any religion. I appreciate aspects of some, but I'm not religious. And that angered my parents. That made me feel like I wasn't allowed to have any kind of opinion or belief on my own. And it it made me feel like I was worthless. And, And for my parents, I'm sorry to be a Christian, so to speak, that doesn't really seem fair for them to force their opinion on me and make me feel like crap because I don't follow what they believe exactly. Um, Anyways, that's just an example of of something that I struggled with uh, accepting and being like, I'm just not religious and that's okay. We're all on our journey. And for me, I can believe what I want to believe. I'm my own person. I'm I'm my own adult, you know? So anyways, yeah, do something for yourself every day that makes you happy starting out with uh, affirming what you believe because that helped me solidify Anna. That helped me solidify who I am as a person and allow me to create these stepping stones that build up my character and my personality based off of what I believe and not what my parents told me to believe and what to be. Um, Another thing, uh, meditation. Um, Like I said, affirming things for yourself. Um, consider, Consider your health. Um, I considered my health back um, around the summertime and I, I made some pretty consistent changes, I would say, as far as exercise goes, what I eat, what makes me feel bad about myself, what makes me feel good about myself, self-care. I think therapy was a form of self-care for myself because mentally I was at my breaking point and I'm like, if I don't get help, how can I even care for myself if I don't even evaluate and, and talk about the things that are bothering me so much? So um, self-care is important. That goes for, you know, your appearance on the outside. That goes for your feelings on the inside. Help yourself feel better. And for me, that was therapy. The first couple of months, I would say first three or four months was talking out what was ailing me so much, talking out what I I could barely get across to her without crying. And she understood that I was broken and she understood that you've internalized a lot, a shit ton over the past couple of years. And I'm surprised you haven't gotten professional help sooner. That's what my therapist told me. Of course, you have your partner if you're with someone or somebody's, um, or you have your friends, your close circle. Um, Maybe you have distant friends that you're open to talking to these things with. Maybe you have other adults in your life that you feel comfortable with. Whatever position they are to you, express that with them. But I think professionally it was um, more beneficial for myself because I know my boyfriend gets, uh, not really, but he, you know, I can understand that he wasn't able to give me the professional opinions and advice that like my therapist could. Uh, Also my best friend, I felt so bad for crying and, and screaming and on FaceTime crying about these things that were, you know, bothering me so much. And, and she would be the best shoulder for me to cry on and, and, talk to but professionally getting that advice and those opinions helps tremendously and I never thought I'd say that I, I have tried to stay so so strong and so independent for myself that when I was allowed to breathe and relax and become softened for a second it felt amazing really it did so much for my mental health so do something for yourself um, one in order to get better and then two every day that will help you get better. If that's resting and laying flat on the floor for 10, 20 minutes every day and just thinking or not thinking or or like I said, speaking positive things into existence for yourself, that is so beneficial. If that's squeezing half a lemon in water and throwing some ice in there and drinking that to relax and feel fresh, do that. If that's buying a new body oil and slathering yourself in that, getting in the comfiest PJs and watching a movie, do that. Um, yeah. I'm already approaching 25 minutes. I'll cut it off here. Let me know if there's anything else that you want me to discuss as far as therapy goes or if you want to know more about what I've been through. Uh, just comment. Let me know. 
Otherwise, I'm so glad to be back. You are seeing the best version I have ever been of myself. And I'm so grateful for what I've invested into for myself. And um, here's to a great year. I hope everyone has a wonderful start to 2021. Thank you. Bye.